in the Lord my soul my soul ain't got a my 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 soul is anchored, yeah. The pillars may roll, the breakers may dash. Now I shouldn't pray because he holds me fast. So dark the days, the clouds in the sky. I know it's gonna be alright. Cause Jesus did not accept my soul. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my 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 soul, my soul is anchored. I said it's anchored. The storm may rise, the wind may blow, but it's anchored. Is anybody anchored? Is anchored in the Lord? Oh yes, it is. Oh yes, it is. Is anchored in the Lord. was anchored in the Lord and anybody that knows her knows she was a faithful servant. I'm Connie and I'm proud to say I was her best friend and I loved her with all my heart. And as I stand here before you giving God all the praise and glory, I just want to ask him to give me the strength to stand here and say these words from my heart. I want the family to know that Tanya was okay in rehab. I want you to know that I was there on the weekends with her. We laughed. I gave her a pedicure. I did her hair. And let me tell you, when I did her hair, she didn't like it. <laughs> she said, Connie, I want two braids down the middle and she said, I want the two parts. She said, I want the part down the middle and two braids on the side. I said, okay, I can do this. I couldn't do it. I parted her hair down the middle and I parted it from ear to ear. So she had two braids, she had four braids. And I said, do you like it? She said, hmm. You know how Tanya, when she, <laughs> she won't tell you she don't like something. She just get real quiet. And she got quiet. And she said, Jeffrey's sister-in-law, Pat, gave me a hat. She said, reach over there in that drawer and put that hat on my head. <laughs> and we laughed and we giggled. And on the weekends, I was there. Jeffrey was there. And she was fine. She was fine being there at rehab. And every time I would go, I'd say, Tanya, it's time to go home. You gotta go home and we gotta go. She was like, Connie, I like it here. And Jeffrey, no, he, she told him that. She said, I like it here. And I was like, what? She said, they take good care of me here. She said, I'm okay. And I was like, you gotta go home. You just gotta go home. She was like, I'm fine. And she, we would laugh and we would talk and we would laugh and 12 days ago, I'll never forget it. It was that Sunday I went up there, and my weekends consumed of her. You know, I didn't care about anything else. I just had to be there for her on the weekends. And I went up there that Sunday, and I'm keep it short because I only got two minutes, but I am a long winder, so just give me just give me a chance to get through this. But that Sunday, I saw her, and she had a doctor's appointment that Monday, and she looked at me. And Tanya knew it was going to take me an hour to get there, and she knew her doctor's appointment was probably only going to be 30 minutes. She didn't care. 
She looked at me. She said, are you coming? And I said, yeah, I'll be there. And I said, you know, I'm going to have to get up at like 530. I'll be there by 8. Okay, you going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be there. So Jeffrey and I, we were there at her doctor's appointment. And, you know, he said, in three weeks, you're going to be going home. And she was doing better. And then all of a sudden on Wednesday, when I got that phone call from Jeffrey, and I couldn't wrap my mind around it because all I could, I couldn't think, I couldn't focus. And then I realized my girl is gone. But you know what? We weren't ready. We were not ready for Tanya to leave us, but Tanya was ready because that's the way she lived her life. She celebrated life every single day. And she loved it. She loved her family. She loved Jeffrey. And just so you know, Tanya and I bonded in physical science in ninth grade. That's how we became best friend, dissecting frogs and worms. And ever since then, Ms. Pearson, she took me in and I became family and I was there. I loved y'all. I will continue to love y'all. And Jeffrey, you are a good man. And she loved you unconditionally. She loved you with her heart and her soul. And I would go to rehab and I said, Tanya, where are you getting them chips from? Jeffrey brought them to me. <laughs> And Tanya was a wonderful daughter. She was a wonderful mom. She was a wonderful grandma, sister, auntie. She loved God. She loved being with family. And she loved vacationing with the whole family. She loved, everybody had to go on vacation. She would get as much of us together as she could. We would go, family gatherings. We would be there, I would be there, the laughter, the fun, I will never forget it. We will continue to have those moments. I just loved her so much. And please know, in closing, that Jeffrey, Rushan, Roger, Missy, Yana, Nephews, Michael, Keisha, Savion, Caden, all the in-laws, Ma and Pa, Akritree, she loved them so much, I can't leave them out. But she was a wonderful daughter. She was a wonderful friend. And we all have our purpose here in life. We all are on this journey. She was a faithful servant. And I know God welcomed her into heaven. And he said, job well done. I know that with all my heart. And as being as polite as Tanya is, I know she said, thank you. I know she did. So in closing, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as I stand before you, continue to bless us, keep us strong, and continue us on this journey in life. Bless the family, for we have lost our loved one, but we know that Tanya is at peace. And as we lean on you for strength, Lord, give us the grace and mercy as we carry on. I love y'all to the family. I will continue to love y'all. You're my sisters and brothers. You're my extended family, and I will continue to be there for you. So God bless each and every one of y'all. Oh, and I did forget, um, June 1980, Tanya gave me this. And it hangs on my wall, and it says, Best Friends Forever. And I just want you to s listen to what her name is all about. Majestic, a person of great accomplishments. Personality, she can brighten up anyone's day. Genuine, knows the value of friendship. Style, a humble champion. Ability, able to work well with others. Character, a person who is not run of the mill. Sentiment, a person who is accustomed to success. Physical, she stays on course. She was a best friend. She was a good friend and I loved her. And y'all know I love Tanya. I loved her with all of my heart and soul. Thank you. Amen. We do want to allow, if there are any others who would like to give reflections at this time, you may do so. And I will just share, um, I met um, Sister Ockertree 
actually when I moved here in 2007, um, she and I, we worked the same place. And um, Sister Ockletree, every morning she would um, walk past my cubicle. And um, every morning, she did not miss a morning and she would sing. Because it wasn't like she was talking, it was like she was singing, good morning. And um, she was always so cheerful, she was so upbeat, um, and then when we began to engage and we began to talk with each other, I realized that she was attending the church down in Lillington at that time. And so even though she was attending church in Lillington, um, we had a project here at Gethsemane that I was working on, and I asked her to do some things for me. Um, she, she was a whiz at the computer. So if it was on the computer, she could do it. And so she was doing some um, Excel spreadsheets for me as we were going out into co the community to evangelize the community. And she was just so willing. That was the person that she was. She was willing to help where she could. And then she transferred her membership to Gethsemane. And when she transferred her membership here, um, she was the same. She was the same every day. She was kind every day. She was a sweet person every day. She was a helpful person. She was a Christian. And so I thank God for allowing her to um, be in my life at work, to be in my life um, here at Gethsemane as a member. And so I do want to say to Jeffrey, to the family, um, we love her, we miss her, and we love you. And we're going to continue to be here and support you throughout this time. Good afternoon. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Gethsemane Seventh-day Adventist Church family sends our sincere sympathy for your loss. Tanya was an exceptional woman. She will be missed with fondness and respect, and we will always remember her love and affection. The obituary. Tanya Renee Ogletree was born on May 19, 1966 at Cape Fear Medical Center in Fayetteville, North Carolina to the late Rufus and Jacqueline Pearson. Tanya was known to be a sweet, loving, and kind-hearted person. She will always greet you with her bright, warm smile. Tanya was passionate but education and learning everything she could. She graduated from Westover High School in Fayetteville, North Carolina. At Fayetteville Technical Community College, she received an executive secretary, secretary degree, then went on to earn a BA from Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. Tanya didn't stop there. She received a master's degree from Pfeiffer University. Tanya knew that she stood on the shoulders of giants and she had an obligation to become her best self. Education was one of her tools. Tanya blossomed into a beautiful young woman who always kept Christ first. She was a spiritual leader and served at the Lillington Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church as a superintendent, personal ministry leader, and Sabbath school teacher. Later, as you heard, she joined the Gethsemane Seventh-day Adventist Church and served as the clerk appointed to making sure the sick and shut-in members were kept up to date with church announcements. She loved to bowl and listen to her favor favorite gospel artists, C.C. Winans and Yolanda Adams. Tanya lived life to the fullest. Tanya met Jeffrey Ochiltree at the Lillington Seventh-day Adventist Church, although at that time she was attending the Abney Chapel Seventh-day Adventist Church in Fayetteville. At the time, Tanya did have a boyfriend, but Jeff had won her over with those smooth advances within a year. The pair dated and were married in 1988. 
They lived in Raleigh for five years before relocating to Fuquay. Tanya and Jeff shared a lifetime of happiness for 32 years until this unexpected journey ended on Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. Tanya leaves to cherish a large family and in her memory is her beloved husband, Jeffrey Ochiltree, son Rashawn Ochiltree and Hannah Lore, grandson Caden Ochiltree, all from Fayetteville, her brothers Roger Lynch and Missy from Rayford, Michael Pearson, Washington, D.C., Abdur Rahim Muhammad from New Jersey, her sisters Bonita James and Randy, who is deceased, from Fayetteville, Keisha Pearson Scott, and Dexter, who is deceased from Fayetteville. Her precious in-laws, Jenny Terry and Ed from Virginia, Patricia Ballard and Andre from Dunn, Deborah Jackson from Maryland, Ronnie Ogletree from Fayetteville, Gloria Cole from Maryland, Myrtle Ray and Levant, excuse me, Myrtle Ray from Lillington, and Levant Ogletree and Pansy from Durham. Vicki Searles and William from Lillington, as well as Icy Stewart and Jewel from Lillington, North Carolina. And you did hear from her very best friend, Connie King. Family waiting for the second coming are Dolores Perry, Calvin Ogletree, and James Ogletree. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, for ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The family will also like to thank the Dafford Funeral Home for their support and their prayer as well as their church gets in me. Thank you. Tanya was a quite a special young lady, always pleasant, unassuming, quiet, a quiet, strong force because she got things done when necessary. And when Laverne just said that about her husband just smoothly, quietly slid on in and took her away from that boyfriend, I could see that. <laughs> I've known the Akatri family for a very long time. So this morning, my heart goes out to you because I don't care how much you expect for someone to not be with you and we all may pass this way. It is not easy. It is not easy. But we know that God loves us and he will make it so. I told Jesus that it would be all right if he changed my name. I told Jesus that it would be all right.
Then the Lord said, child, the world is going to hate you if I change your name. He said, child, they'll use you and abuse you. If I change your name, I said I've been used, and Lord, I've been abused, but it's you, Jesus. So I want you to change my name. My name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Anybody want their name changed? Oh, come on. Any, anybody want their name changed? Anybody want God to do something new for you? If you, if you want your name changed, just wave your hand and say, God, change, 
change my name, God. Fix me right, Lord. Touch me, God. Change my name. I know I've messed up, but God, would you just change my name? I, I know people know me about my past, but God, just, just change my name. I, I know I've made some mistakes, but God, would you please? I'm your child, Lord. Change my name. Won't you change? Yes. Would you do me a favor today? Give a thunderous applause to Jesus Christ for the life. Tanya Ogletree, please. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together for her life right now. The, the, the times that God gave us. I, I'm, I'm honored and thankful. Jeff, first of all, to you and to her son, Rashawn. I just want to say that even though today is a sad day, we don't mourn without hope. Oh, come on, somebody. We don't mourn without hope that we're going to see her again. I, I have to admit, Jeff, I, I, I've read a lot of obituaries, but I, I'm glad that, that on the fourth paragraph here, you let everybody know that she, she was with another brother. <laughs> now, I, I want y'all to go back to the fourth pa paragraph. It, it, you know, it doesn't just say, it says his smooth advances. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Jeff said, I'm a good-looking brother, but he, he wasn't just good-looking. He was talking different. Someone say amen to somebody. <laughs> I said, that is all right with me. Pray, praise the Lord for some smooth advances. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. But I, I, I've come here today to give some hope. Not going to be long today. But I do believe there is a word from the Lord that I think will benefit all of us. Revelation chapter 14. Thank you, Iris. Where is she? Thank you. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for our psalmstress. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Revelation chapter 14 is where God has us. Um, just one verse today, starting at verse 13. I want you to listen to the words that God has for us today about our dear sister. Where the Lord reads in this fashion, Then I heard the voice from heaven saying to me, Write these words, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they may rest from their labors and their work will follow them. I want to just preach if I can just for a few moments today under the title, The Rewards of Being with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the total sufficiency of Jesus Christ. God, have your way in this house, oh God, we do pray. Fall afresh and new upon us, God. We're asking you to do it right now. So what I've studied, but I still need your spirit. I've prepared, but I still need your power. We pray now these things, Lord, in your name. Amen and amen. Several years ago, a man died who was extremely wealthy. His will was full of very expensive art pieces worth tens of thousands of dollars. This man had a son who had died some time before him, and the son whom he loved and his son would have been the only heir. So instead, after this man's death, this wealthy man died. They had a public auction that held all of his valuable pieces. People came from all over the world to buy and, and, and auction off on these expensive art pieces. Over a thousand people gathered in the auction room. The auctioneer began the auction by offering up a portrait painted by the deceased son. It was a rather plain painting, not like any of the other expensive pieces, and they opened the floor for bids, but there was a deafening silence. Nobody bid on the piece. After what seemed like a long time, an old man walked down the aisle, neared the front of the room toward the auctioner, and the auctioner recognized him as a servant of the wealthy man who passed away. He meagerly and almost shamefully offered up a couple of dollars from his pocket for this child-drawn portrait of the son. The auctioner hit the gavel and said sold, and many people got excited because now they can get to the good stuff. But to their amazement, the auctioner hit the javelin again and said the auction is over. The room was filled with loud chattering confusion, wondering at the early close of the auction, but the auctioner went on to explain that in the will of the master, the instructions specified that whosoever bought the painting of the son 
would receive all of the benefits and the riches of the Father. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me today. The master had decided that whosoever loved and valued the son enough to buy the painting, then that person would receive all of the riches and the benefits of the father. Family, I came by to let you know today that, that, that your dear sister here, she loved the son. Oh, God, help me to preach in here today. And, and because she loved the son, she got all of the riches that the father had to offer. Is there anybody thankful that when you love the son, there's some, there's some benefits that come with loving the son. There's, there's some joy that comes with loving the son. There's some peace that comes with loving the son. But not just that, not just riches on this earth. But God got something greater in store for each and every one of us in the earth made new. The Bible lets us know in Revelations 14, verse 13, it said, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Did you, did you catch what, the, what, what, what John is saying here? He said, Blessed. Now, God, I, I, I've had a loved one who has just passed. I've had someone who I love. And, and how in the world could you say blessed? Because God is saying it, it's not just somebody who's dying under anybody's contract. He said, blessed be the one that dies in the Lord. Can, can I break that down today? See, see, th see, this is the identity of those who are blessed. John is writing down. He's gotten a word from the Lord, and the, and the Lord lets him know, I want to tell you people who are blessed. Even though they're not here now, they're still blessed. And God is saying this. He says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. What does it mean, y'all, to, to die in the Lord? It means that while you were living on earth, you had a special connection with the creator. That while you were living on earth, you walked with him, and you talked with him, and you were tell Jesus that God I don't know how I'm going to make it but I'm going to trust you see people who die in the Lord learn to know that all they had to do was say Father I stretch my hand to thee no other help do I know when you die in the Lord while you were on earth you learn to know that all you've got to do is trust and obey there is no other way but to be happy in Jesus I'm going to trust and obey see, see, see the identity of the blessed is someone who, who realizes that even though I've struggled through this life. There's a greater reward for me up, laid up just for me. That means, y'all, that while I'm living on this earth, I've got to learn to build a consistent relationship with Jesus. Now, now we read in the obituary that, that her heart was stolen by the man of her dreams today, but I cannot, can't let y'all know something? That, that, that her heart would never be stolen by the one who took care of her every single day, the one who would make sure she got up in the morning. Her heart was never deterred. The, listen, if you read the obituary, you learned that she didn't just love serving people, she loved serving God. See, see, I love this because it lets us know, everybody, the nature of her relationship is that when she spent time and quality time with Jesus, it built what's I, what I like to call a foundation of comfort. Can I help you with that? It's a foundation that, that the more she prayed and the more songs that she sung and the, the more time she spent in family worship and the more times she had devotion, she was just laying a foundation so that every now and then when she get knocked down, she'd be able to get back right up again. I, I'll help you with this. I, I had one of those blow-up toys. Uh, back in the day, I'm only 31, but I, I can still say back in the day, um, um, I had one of those blow-up toys. And when I was a kid, uh, uh, the blow-up toy, it would be interesting, you would punch the toy, and the toy would pop back up. And, and then you, you, you punch the toy. I, I think I'm Muhammad Ali. I'm punching this toy, and the toy would just pop back up. So I started to get frustrated because every time I knocked down the toy, the toy would not stay down. And my father had to help me with this. He let me know that, son, the reason why the toy keeps popping back up is because there's a foundation at the bottom of the toy. And there is something called sand at the bottom of the toy. And no matter how hard you hit the toy, what's on the inside of the toy is greater than the pain the toy can ever receive. So every time you punch the toy, the toy is going to pop back up, not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. And can I let somebody know today that this is not the end of her story because she's got some foundation on the inside. She's laid some relationship on the inside. And when the Lord comes back, she's going to pop up and meet them in the earth made new because she's got something on the inside. The Bible lets us know that when we have a relationship with Jesus, we ought not be afraid of death. 
wish I had a church in here. Her best friend just said it. She, she, she was all right. Uh, the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley. Uh, can I break that down? The text don't say run. <laughs> the text says walk. That word walk in the Hebrew means it's a, it's a slow walk because you're not afraid of nothing because somebody else bigger than you is with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Stop right there. That word shadow. Do you know that shadows, even though they're dark, shadows can't hurt you. Um, shadows, shadows are only around because there must be light somewhere. Um, I thank God for the fact that I can walk through the valley because I know even though I go through dark seasons, the Bible says he's with me, but he's not just in front of me. He's not just behind me, but he covers all sides of me. I, I can be blessed. And you know what? Our sister Tanya, she learned that wherever she goes, Jesus was always with her. See, see, as I learned a little bit about her, I learned that she was a worshiper. She didn't just worship God in church. She, she took time to spend some time with God throughout the week. She wasn't afraid to open up her mouth and sing. She wasn't afraid to give God her best praise because, Jeff, she understood that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. So we understand the... The identity of the blessed are those who, who die in the Lord. But, but then here's the nature of the blessing. Can I tell you the kind of blessing she's getting? The Bible says rest. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says rest from, from labor. Same word that is used in the scripture that says, Come unto me, all ye that who are labored and heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. But y'all, that, that rest has nothing to do with being sleepy or tired. That word rest means relief. Woo. Uh, that, that, anybody need some relief from God? God says she's blessed, not just because she's in me, Jeff, but she's also relieved of all of her duties. <laughs> that means that whatever she was struggling with, whatever ailment she was dealing with, whatever, whatever she had, when she went down in the Lord, when she, when she wakes up again, she's going to be relieved. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? Because one of the blessings you do know, that when Christ calls her and she comes up out of the ground, the Bible's going to let us know that that body that was immortal is going to uh, uh, put on immortality. That means that she won't go down. She won't come up the same way that she went down. She's going to come up healed. She's going to come up renewed. Her eyesight's going to be strong. Her muscles are going to be ready to go. I believe this, y'all, that when they come out the ground, the, the, the word of the Lord lets us know that he's got a place just for her. But I want to take it a step further. I believe that God's got a robe already with her name on it. The Bible lets us know that he, he gives rest. Because if she... We'll be honest with most of us, as I'm sure her best friend talked about. And Jeff, you know that as she went through all the different struggles and all the different issues and concerns of life, she never had to worry what the outcome was going to be. Because when you die in the Lord, you already know the end of the story. You know, um, I, love, I love watching. I, I love my wife. Um, she watches the same movie over and over and over again. <laughs> now, 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 now she, she still cries at the same spots. She still laughs at the same spots. And she still jumps up and gets scared at certain spots. Baby, you've seen this movie over and over and over again. I, I, said, I said, aren't you tired of seeing how over and over again? She says, no, I'm not tired of it because I love how the story always ends. See, it starts off rocky in the beginning. There's some, there's some shakiness in the middle, but, but I know how it's going to end. I know I'm crying right now, but, but I know I'm going to be smiling a little bit later on because I know how it's going to end. And don't you know, because he holds the keys to the grave, y'all, that we already know how the story is going to end. The Bible lets us know, y'all, that she's going to not only put on immortality, but that reward of relief is going to get her into the kingdom. See, one of the, one of the issues of Christianity today 
is that we have forgotten that this world don't belong to us. Can I, can I talk here for a second, Jeff? Did y'all forget that, that, that we don't belong here? <laughs> that I got a mansion with my name on it. I, um, 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 I, I, the, the, the songs they used to sing about walking on streets of gold. Uh, I want to walk on streets of gold. I, I want to have wings and I want to be able to fly to this planet. And the, don't y'all know that this world don't belong to us? I know you got some nice suits in your closet. I know that, that your hair looks real good. But is there anybody thankful about heaven? That, that this ain't the only thing we can get. God says, I've got something with Tanya's name on it. God says, don't you know, he is laying up right now. Heaven is saying, don't worry. When I call her back home, Jeff, we've got a house with her name on it. When we've got green grass and trees of fruit and we've got streets of gold and she'll never get tired and she'll never have another doctor's appointment and she'll never have to worry about what she's going to do here and do there. She can relax and know that her reward is laid up in heaven. Because, you know, the next thing that she sees is the face of the long time. To us, it's going to be some heavy days ahead. To us, we're going to be tired and we're going to be angry and wonder why, God, why would you take her from us? But to her, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, <laughs> that means it's faster than a blink. That the next thing that she experiences is the face of the Savior. Isn't that good news, somebody, today? That the next thing that she experiences is God Almighty. But I believe this family today, is, as we've got to understand this, is why her reward is heaven. And after she's going to see Jesus, another reward is seeing your face, too. Can I take my time through here? She's not going to be interested in seeing Peter first. <laughs> She wants to see Jeff first. I know she can't wait to see Jesus, but, but she's not going to be in the line to see Moses. No, she wants to see her son first. Uh, I, I know that she can't wait to sing in the heavenly choir, but before she goes to rehearsal, she wants to see you all first. And that means that the same way she lived is the same way you got to live. It should never be that our loved ones get to heaven and wonder where we are. The Bible lets us know that she's blessed because she's sealed by the relationship. She's blessed because she got rest. But, but, but how do we know that this, that this blessing is good? And I'm going to take my seat after this. How do we know it's certain that she's going to be blessed? And it's this one little phrase in the first part of the portion of the text it says then I heard a voice from heaven saying y'all missed that I'll say it again how do we know that this thing is good Jeff how do we know that the contract will be sufficient through death and it's right here it's simply put and I heard a voice from heaven one more time how do I know that she's going to be sealed he said I didn't hear from my mama and them I didn't get the word from somebody else I heard a voice from heaven, which lets me know, y'all, the only voice strong enough to get from the gates of heaven to where I am dealing where I am, it's got to be the voice of Jesus. And it lets us know, everybody, I can be certain because I know who I'm talking to. I know it's the one that can keep me from falling. I know it's the one that walked on water. I know it's the one that has risen the dead before. I know it's the one that can cure leprosy just by a touch. I know it's the one where a woman with the issue of blood came and touched the hem of the garment. I know who's speaking. The Bible says, I... I heard the voice from heaven saying, then he says, Why? watch this, he says, write this down. And it's not to suggest, Iris, that John's not already writing. In other words, God's saying, I need you to pay close attention here. He says, blessed are they <laughs> who die in the Lord <laughs> because their reward, God, I help me to preach in here, is going to be just for them. The Bible lets us know, y'all, that God says my voice is going to move forward over the earth and I'm going to stretch out my blessing far and wide. But this is only reserved for those who have been living for Jesus. See, this is, this is what's known as God's benefit package. And God's benefit package isn't just for this life, it's for the next life. 
that when you get on with Jesus, it's not going to be easy. But baby, you better believe it's going to be worth it. That she's going to receive all the benefits that God has to offer simply because she's connected to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to take my seat, but before I go, I, I want to share this story with you. Uh, one, of my, one of my colleagues who's a doctor now, we were talking about our, some childhood memories, and he said, Austin, man, every single summer I got a chance to go to Disney World. And I said, man, praise the Lord, because my family was poor. We, we, we watched Disney on TV, but we, we couldn't go see Disney in person. He said, no, Austin. He said, we were poor too. He said, but I met a friend in camp, and every year his family would invite me to go to Disneyland. I said, well, man, well, that's, that's great. Did, did, they, did they pay for your ticket? He says, well, well, not necessarily. He says, me and the son would go by ourselves to the camp to, to, to go out into the Disney World every single day. I was there in Florida. But he says um, his father worked as, a, as the chief maintenance officer of the, of the property. He says, so every time we were able to get into the park, I didn't need a new ticket. I got into the park because of something called a buddy pass. A buddy pass is simply this. If you know somebody and they're your buddy, then they can get into the park. See, he didn't have no money and his parents didn't have no money. Matter of fact, he wasn't even connected to the father necessarily, but because he knew the son of the father. God help me to preach in here. Every time he wanted to get into the park, every time he wanted to ride a ride, all he had to do was get a buddy pass from the son and the buddy pass came by way of the father and I came by to let someone know today that our sister here though she is sleeping can I let y'all know today that she too has a buddy pass and the buddy pass comes with a fresh new robe a buddy pass comes with some new wings the buddy pass comes with a new voice I know she can't wait to hear Yolanda Adams sing one day but I believe this she's gonna be able to sing with the archangels I know she ain't like how you did her hair but don't you worry when she gets up her hair is gonna be flowing am I talking to somebody in here I'm talking about heaven when she gets to heaven she'll be able to see her master face to face and she'll be able to say that heaven was cheap enough so is there anybody in here that wants a buddy pass is there anybody in here that says God I'll be your buddy all you have got to do is just simply call on the name of the Lord heaven will be cheap enough I thank God for the buddy pass hold on to your buddy pass down here because it's still gonna be good up there No matter what you're going through, Jeff, I want you to know when the tears flow and they will. Family, I want you to know when, when days are hard to think about the good times. I want you to remember what it's going to feel like when she sees your face again. I need you to hear what I'm saying here. Because we, we tend to forget. You can play something softly here. We tend to forget that heaven is truly cheap enough. That no matter what you're going through in life, there is nothing on this world that is worth more than heaven. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? There is nothing, there is no amount of money, there is no amount of tangible goods, ain't nothing gonna replace heaven. says that when he comes back it says that every eye will see him when he comes back those who have died in the Lord they, they'll be caught up first when she gets to the gates there'll be no registration because they've been waiting on her are y'all hearing what I'm saying there? and Jeff she'll get a chance to see you again and Embrace it. It'll be one big family reunion. Guys, I don't know about you, but I, I want to wear a crown one day. What about you? Father, today we thank you for the life and the legacy of our dear sister Tanya right now, God. God, we thank you that we know this promise is sure 
not because of anybody else, but because you said it from the throne of grace that blessed are those who fall asleep in the Lord. God, thank you that this is just rest. This is just sleep. This is not the final moment here because she's going to get up again. God, help us to get ourselves together. If we're not together, get us together. The same Jesus that she fell in love with. Help us to fall in love with you all over again. And God, I'm going to take some liberty here. If there's somebody under the sound of my voice that doesn't have their buddy pass yet, we make it available right now. That all you've got to do is open up your heart and say, God, forgive me of my sins and save me when you come. Because God, it's not just about having the robe and having the house and, and being at the welcome table. It's about seeing you, Jesus. Because Lord, to be honest, we've gone through too much hell down here to miss the glory of up there. So Lord, thank you for the robe that you got for him. And we look forward to spending time with her again. Now Lord, be with the family. God, help them to live for you every single day. God, I pray right now in the days ahead where the enemy will sow deceit and doubt, help them to remember that all they've got to do is call on the name of the Lord. And you'll never leave us nor forsake us. God, we take the time to pray these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen. One more time, put your hands together once again for the life of our dear sister. We thank God. Today for all that, you are, that, that we, have, we have done today, all of the music and songs. At this time, we're, we're getting ready to turn over our funeral services at this moment to the Danford Funeral Home as we prepare to do our committal at this time. Please. Should we stand at this time? For inasmuch as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear sister to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit her body to the ground in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection when our Lord shall return in glory. Then this body of our humiliation will be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Shall we pray? Father, we now take this final moment to pray over this committal service. Lord, we know that this is not her final resting place. This is only for a moment. We look forward to meeting her in the earthly realm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
shell tread the streets of gold oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory sing Two!